and I am very excited to have Dr. Helen Smith with me now, the author of Men on Strike. Joining me now in the studio, uh, Helen, what do you mean when you say men are on strike? How? Um, men are on strike in terms of like marriage, fatherhood, and even the American dream in the sense that they're not even going to college as often because uh, there, are, there are so many reasons. It's just become a very bad deal for men today and people don't realize it. People think men are immature, like there's all kinds of books written by Hannah Rawson, like The End of Men, <laughs> and all kinds of things about the decline of men and manning up or whatever. But I think the real thing is that men feel that right now it's just a very poor deal in terms of legal issues. Men don't get kids as often. They're, they're only about 10% of the time do they get child custody. They're the ones paying alimony. We don't even, I just did a radio show and the guys were talking about how they literally were pushed out of the room when their baby was born and told, the, a mother was told that, was asked questions about, um, you know, is your husband an abuser and that type of thing. And it's just appalling what men go through. I mean, I used to consider myself a feminist, but I thought feminism meant equality between the sexes. But now it seems to me special privileges for women. Uh, 20 years ago when I started my private practice, I had a man in a wheelchair who was being beaten by his wife and there, were, there was no help available for him. And it really got me thinking about what do men do in that situation? And just the men on my blog and the readers from all over the country just prompted me and helping me to understand what men are going through in this country. And the uh, one, last thing I want to say is men are not allowed to speak up. So I'm here as their sort of advocate because if men speak up, they're called whiners, they're called, you wimps. know, wimps, man up, and they're not allowed to talk. I, I've talked to men across the United States on my blog. I run a men's rights blog and I've worked with men for over 20 years in my private practice. And what I found is that men say that it's the legal ramifications. They don't have any legal rights in marriage anymore. There's something called coverture. And what it is is used to men held all the debt, all the cards in marriage and they held the legal rights. Now women do. And if you look at it, men, when they get divorced, they only get custody of children 10% of the time. Even if the they, woman's cheating? You know, if the woman's cheating. And if that's not your child, most states say you still have to pay. You find out three years later your three-year-old isn't yours, you still have to pay in most states. Jim McNamara is a, is a um, professor and he found that 69% of the time men are portrayed in the media in a negative light as buffoons, pedophiles, perverts. And what message is this sending to people uh, across the United States? I mean, to men. All right, so, so you give some tips about what men can do to right. fight back. For example, stop letting women control the dialogue. That's what the most respect? important. Yes. Well, women now, in fact, here I am a woman, at least you're a man, and two women are talking about it, but women control the dialogue. Most of the articles and things about gender are written by women or they're written by men who have a feminist bent. Men need to stand up and say, you know what? I'm going to write about it. I'm going to talk about it and right. quit being quiet. Men look at things in terms of cost analysis and the penalties for marriage are so high and the rewards now are so low. First of all, there's, there's legal costs of marriage. There are so many men now who are just saying, you know what, it's just not worth it to me. I'm going to be stuck paying the alimony. I'm going to be stuck paying for child support. And it's not just legal reasons. It's also psychological ones where men feel that um, basically, they don't really have rights in marriage. Women hold all the cards now in reproduction and all kinds of things, and men don't. Well, that's all true. I mean, I agree with that completely. But it still doesn't absolve men of the responsibility to stop complaining okay. about how the cards are against them and man up and become men because you don't become a man until you assume responsibility. What, what man would take such a raw deal? I don't consider that a man. Well, That's it's not true. actually, it's not a raw deal. You, you derive deep satisfaction as a man by taking responsibility for other people. That's the only place you get deep, deep satisfaction. So men are supposed to take a really bad deal and sign their rights away, and you call that a good deal. Look, you would understand economic well, rewards. I did. You did well. Maybe that's that's good, and maybe you have a really good wife. But a lot of men don't feel that way. But see, doctor, here's where I get confused. I, and forgive me, I just went to a wedding last night, so I'm feeling all loved up. Euphoric. Very, yeah. very, because it was beautiful. <laughs> and any time that you do see a wedding, that the hope is renewed, and it does remind you but of what's great about marriage. And so you act as though marriage is such a raw deal for men, but you do get companionship, and you get love, and you get a family. And I see men enjoying all of that and embracing all of that. That's a different topic. Those are also things that you can get with a relationship. We're talking about the legal aspect of marriage. That's, I'm talking about the political and the legal ramifications of marriage, where men aren't getting such a good deal there. And there are thousands of men across the country that I've spoken to and that will tell you differently. And the statistics are bearing that out. A lot of men, you think men need to man up, but to man up, you have to be getting something out of that relationship. What you're saying is that men are getting something just by, by having a woman. They're well, just so well, lucky. Here's the thing. They're allowed. The one thing I agree with you on is men are getting away with having children without marrying the woman. They're not getting they away have. with it. What's happening is a lot of women, number one, don't want them. The lower level women, what's happening is 40% of the women who are breadwinners, a lot of those lower level women are making seventeen to $23,000. Those women use the government to pay for themselves. They don't want a man. So rather than some of those men are just opting. That's a Why hasn't that's a man that's written that's this book? Why hasn't a man written this book? You because 
because men it. can't speak up. I'm here to speak up because people will actually listen to a woman. It's really unfortunate. I want the next man, and I'm hoping by this book that that next man is out so, there. What, 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 what you I want to say something is? as a man, because I, this always has frustrated me. When I see commercials when men sort of speak, and they're acting like men, right? And all these commercials are out there where the man's like the, the lazy guy on the couch. He's a tool. But look the what the culture back. is doing to the men. The culture is telling men, you are no good. You are no good in marriage. You are no good. Even you all are hearing here, here saying man up to men, and that's a really negative message to be, to, to be sending to men. But what do you think the solution is? The solution is for us to have fair laws and things for men, and to also, these commercials, we need to look at the culture and say, you know what, quit treating men like trash. Seriously, we treat men very poorly in this society. That's fascinating to me, because as, as we've just gone through, uh, all of the forces at work here to find that wages for men are actually less today, the median wage for men, is less today than in 1968. Exactly. The implications of that are extraordinary. They can't support a family uh, on that median. That's one uh, of the reasons they can't. Su they can't support families. So um, lower-income women don't want men as often, and lower-income men are getting let married less and less at mm -hmm. all ages. And part of it is not just that they're going on strike, but the women a lot of times don't want lower-level men. The other thing is women are becoming so highly educated now that they want higher level men and the men don't want to go to college anymore because colleges have become so feminized in some sense that a lot of men don't. It starts early in the earlier grades. What, what do you mean feminized? Uh, I, I think, I mean, that resonates, but what do you mean? I mean that everything has become about what girls need, what women need. It's not about what boys need. A lot of times boys are into mastery, they're into and, you know, skill, competition, and our schools are so filled now with people who only look at sitting still, reading books that are yeah. basically for girls, and a lot of boys are interested in other things. They don't want to just sit still, and they want to learn in a different type of way, and the schools don't allow that. We have boys in this country who can't read, and nobody does anything about that. We also have so many female teachers. There are only 16% of teachers now are men in the elementary school. Is that right? Yes, and those female teachers, according to the, school, the London School of Economics, did a study, and they found that female teachers as a whole give lower marks to boys. Well, those son of the guns. Yes. Well, I don't know, son of the guns. <laughs> well. the, the, the reality is right now society uh, is becoming such a constrained place. The political correctness, hidebound orthodoxies. Uh, women are doing well, but not mm -hmm. as well as it might be inferred. Right. For example, the Pew Research uh, study just recently showing that women well, were uh, amount to 40% of the breadwinners. Mm -hmm. But when you look at those numbers, 63% of those women are on average earning $23,000 yes. a year. Right. They are effectively dependent on the state. They are yes. not breadwinners. It's the wrong term. They're not, <laughs> they're not winning and there's not much bread there. But what's happening is they don't need men anymore. You see, no, the state, I, let state have become their husband. The state is now the husband. That's and a great way to put it. That's the exactly husband, what it is. Husbands state, are now expendable. And the state isn't. Uh, right. it's, a, it's a level of dependency uh, that uh, is going to alter the way we live. I mean, first of all, there's lots of new these laws in, or rules in colleges. The colleges are, they say that if a man is found used to it used to be a 90 to 100 percent you had to find a man guilty of a sexual assault and now on the college campuses that take federal funds there was an obama letter that in 2011 went out and it said okay any man that's found guilty of a sexual harassment or sexual abuse or a sexual assault all we have to have is 50 percent in a feather in other words there's these campus administrators they have what's called a campus tribunal and they control young men's sexuality by saying okay we don't really need a, a large amount of evidence all we need is we think you did it and that young man can be thrown out of school they can have their their career options limited because who's going to want to hire a guy who's been accused of sexual abuse or harassment um, and the other thing is people don't realize it but in our society for example a young boy and I have uh, an example of this in my book a young boy who's 14 or 15 who has sex with a 34 year old woman if she gets pregnant that boy is liable for child support are you kidding I'm not I'm serious and there's never been a case um, Michael Higdon is a professor at the University of Tennessee and he did a paper on this and one of the things that the paper said is there's never been a case where a boy of that age has gotten off. If you were 14 or 15 and you have sex with an older woman, even if it's statutory rape, it doesn't matter. You're liable for child support. Now, I, I, I got to interrupt with a question right here. But if it, if it went the other way, exactly. it, there was, I mean, if a, if a guy rapes a girl, uh, there's the, 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 
There'd be an uproar. The man would be put in jail. Yeah, but the girl. So the girl couldn't possibly be held responsible for. No. Tra- I mean, that's insane. But that's the thing is, people talk about ir- how irresponsible boys are of that age, and then they turn around. They suddenly they're always so responsible that they know exactly what they're doing, even if they're having sex with a 34 year old woman, and then they're ha- she's having his baby. I mean, of course he's responsible, right? Because that 14 or 15 year old knows exactly what he's doing. Right. I just think it's sort of ironic when it comes to men. They're immature until you need to slap their, you know, their hand or put them in jail or something. I don't really consider myself any type of feminist because the feminist movement, it seems like there's just, there has been a lot of power, and I think part of it's political. We have, um, one of the interesting things is I found uh, that about 30% of women in the United States consider themselves feminists, but when you look at the women who vote, it turns out that about 70% of those women consider themselves feminists. So I think a lot of times the laws are driven by, I kind of call it matriarchy by proxy, but <laughs> men are afraid. Of course, if Barack Obama got up and said something negative towards women, he'd have a firestorm on his hands, just like we saw with Larry Summers, the president of, of uh, Harvard, right. got ousted, as you know, um, because he said something that women didn't like. And so men are afraid they could lose their position. They could lose, you know, their job. And and then that's sort of why I wrote the book is because I want to talk to men about how, you know, how they need to speak out because I think men are afraid to come forward or to say anything because we're so used to thinking of women as the victims in our society and that men can't be discriminated against. Well, how, how do men handle this? How do men speak out, whether it's uh, at a university? I mean, they'll get themselves in trouble. If it's on the job, they'll get themselves in trouble. If it's in a relationship, they'll get themselves in trouble. Uh, and they're taught this. Uh, they're taught to fear it, as you, as you uh, well document. So w- w- how do they go about it? Well, I think there are different ways. And I talk in the book about you know different ways to deal with it. Um, certainly, if you have um, a girlfriend or a, you know somebody potentially that you want to marry, I talk about ways in the book to kind of, you know, get to know this person for a longer period of time, sort of get a feeling for how they treat you. I think a lot of men jump into things. They they feel um, if they like a woman or they, they sort of they, they get involved, and I think it's very hard for them to pull themselves back and to really put boundaries on women. And it's hard. Men aren't hardwired to – they're kind of hardwired more to protect women, and it's very hard for them to confront uh, a woman and what she's doing, but I think that's a very necessary part of a relationship is that you have to be forward about what you will and won't tolerate. When you see a woman for the first time do something that's, you know, maybe she makes fun of men or maybe she tells you you're not going out with your friends or maybe she starts to put a lot of boundaries. on That women. should be a red flag. Exactly. Yeah. How are you accepted or not accepted in academia and by your friends? You know, I mean, what's, what's your life like having these thoughts and, and beliefs? sort of a big feminist so my family was driven crazy by those thoughts now they just sort of tune me out. well wait a minute how'd you change um i think it went so far the other way i think um as i got older when i was younger it seemed to me that women had some of these problems and then i realized as as i got older that indeed that the society had changed that the problems that women used to have in some sense have turned around and, and there's like a backlash against men also i think because i've seen so many men in my practice i in 20 years ago I had a practice in New York, and one of the first patients I had was a man who was being beaten by his wife, and I couldn't get any help for him. And I realized at that point that, yes, men had a, it was a very serious problem. And from there, I just became more open to it. But as far as myself, I mean, people don't bother me too much. Most people are poor. I think a lot of times people are surprised. Or if I talk to women about the book that I wrote, they they think it's like a cute book that a psychologist wrote. That right, they, right. <laughs> how do you rope a man in or whatever? But I think most men get it. I don't even have to say anything, but they totally get it. And you see this look of like this in their eyes, sort of like, oh, yeah, I get that. And you don't really have to say that much to them. And, you know, that's another thing, uh, domestic violence in this country. And people don't understand if you say that men get beaten, too, by their, by their wives or spouses or whatever, or that it's a problem with men on the receiving end, you know, they, they look at you like you're some kind of nut job, but it, all you got to do is look at the Justice Department statistics. Well, it's true, and um, there's actually been some really good research that's come out, even from the National Institutes of Health and other places, that show that about 50% of the time women are instigating vi- domestic violence, and that's a, that's a high level. People think, like, oh, men don't really get hurt, you know, but what happens is men just don't really report it, and we don't really think if a man has a black eye. I mean, remember Amy Winehouse? I mean, she had this boyfriend or husband, and you'd always see him in the papers with a black eye that she gave him. We would never accept that. If a woman has a black eye, 
like we're seeing with this recent case with Nigella Lawson, the, the um, I don't know if you're following that, but the cook, the lady who's a chef on TV, um, there's a bunch of stuff in the papers all about how her husband tried to choke right. her. Right, yes, with the, and they got the picture of uh, his hand on her neck in the restaurant or something. And yeah. they're trying to, I've even heard reports about how they, people want to go after him, they want him arrested, this, that, and the other thing. But they used to show pictures of Amy Winehouse's husband all the time with a big black eye that she'd beaten him and punched him in the eye. And nobody cares because people just don't think that it hurts if it's a guy. But it hurts.